All right, everyone, welcome back to their Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil. And I have some of my biggest Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes conspiracy theories for you guys. Hopefully you enjoy this. Just kind of something to break it up a little bit. You know, sometimes I want to give you advice. Other times I just want to bring fun content. So I hope you guys appreciate uh, this video. Again, like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let's get into the video. Let's talk about some conspiracy theories. But of course, got to give a shout out to the channel members. They're just thank you guys so much for continuing to put your faith in me. I hope you enjoyed the, the channel, the content, all that stuff. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I This channel would not be what it is without your guys' support. So thank you again. Go grab your tinfoil hats on. Everybody get ready. Let's talk about some conspiracy theories that I have about Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. So number one. Every Datacron set benefits Rey, Lord Vader, and Inquisitors. I, every single time Datacrons roll around in some way, shape, or form, these guys find a way to get benefit. And it's just, I mean, it's crazy. And maybe, it's, I shouldn't say every set, but that between every two sets, these characters are never left out, right? Like, they're never left out. And it, like, I don't know if everybody else feels this way, but it's just a constant perpetual state of, holy crap, this is so good with Rey. This is so good with Lord Vader. Inquisitors love this so much. And I mean, especially with the Inquisitors, because they've got unaligned force user, their own tag, and then an empire tag on top of that. So they benefit from all these separate factions to boost them up, like, it, uh, yeah, I, I just, I've always felt like every single set is completely designed around what can make Rey, Lord Vader, and Third Sister good. Yes, I recognize there are other GLs who gain benefit, but I think with these two in particular, so much of their kit is based on that survivability or damage. And so, like, if you ramp their offense or you ramp their survivability, they get that much harder to beat. And then with the Inquisitors, I mean, it's just uh, their kits are so good as it is that you're already pushing the boundaries against them when you're not using a Galactic Legend. So adding Datacrons on top of it, I just, man, every set, every set they're getting something. And I don't know, I would love, I would love, if I had my way with Datacrons, it'd be the level three, six, and nine, and we'd move on with life. Because it's not just about like, oh, you know, there's an Empire Datacron right now. But just think of some of the stats that you can get on these things. Like on this one down here, I've got 40% of, like over 40% deflection on that. Like that's kind of absurd, right? Like that's not a small amount of deflection. You know, like we're, we're cooking. So I, I just, I feel like every single time those characters just get some great benefit from this. So that's conspiracy theory number one. All right, conspiracy theory number two, the early drop rates. So this is something I've noticed a lot more recently as I've been doing more of my farming and kind of transitioning to the characters who are newer to the game. But the drop rates early are actually very solid. Like I've found that the longer that character is in the game, like I get far worse drops in Tarful than I do for Paz Vizsla, I feel, or IG-12 and Grogu or Keller and Beck. I could be wrong, and maybe I'm just, like, paying more attention to Tarful. But I feel like I get much better drops on the newest characters than I do on characters who've been in the game for a little bit. Um, like, on my alt account, my Rex, my Captain Rex is keeping pace with my Hera. Now, I'm refreshing Rex. But, like, it's, you kind of sit there, and you're like, okay, they're keeping pace with each other. Um, which is intended, but on, like, this account here... I just, I feel like I'm making so much more progress on the characters who are much newer releases than ones who have been around in the game a little bit longer. And a big part of me wonders if Capital Games intentionally does this to try to give players who are going to farm the those characters early um, and spend the crystals for the refreshes and stuff, give them the most benefit there. Um, it's just a conspiracy theory I have. Like... I think there's a lot of ones we could go into with character shards that when you get down to those final three, they start getting real skimpy real quick. Um, but yeah, I feel like the early shard drop rates are just so incredibly good. K 
comparative to some of those ones that are in the later stages um yeah all right next the crit damage mods all right this is a big one but i feel like capital games hates critical damage mods and i think this goes back to the era before relics before relics were in the game critical damage was one of the best stats you could get you know speed and critical damage kind of ruled the roost health didn't matter offense wasn't as big of a deal it was protection critical damage and uh speed those were kind of the big stats that mattered because they were the ones that you could ramp the most they were the ones that you could get the highest and get the most benefit out of and now that relics exist all of a sudden it seems like critical damage just kind of got shoved out of the way and they're like no you want offense on everyone because all their relic levels boost up their offense so as you increase relics boom you're gaining more offense which means that you're going to get a better benefit from offense mods and I, I wombat and i were talking about this and he was like they just hate critical damage mods and i don't know if they hate critical damage mods or they don't know how to create a character who could actually use critical damage over offense right um and from a just pure perspective of looking at this game i would tell you that offense is the better stat between the two because it's not situational you are always going to be hitting however much harder because of the offense you have on your character where critical damage is complete completely reliant on a critical hit so i i don't know i've i've I definitely have thought for a while, I'm like, I don't see a single character who actually wants critical damage anymore because they just would rather have offense. Um, so make critical damage mods great again. You know, I, 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 you guys let me know, what do you think? But like, I 100% believe this. Like, I think this is insane. Um, and then finally, conquest tweaking. This is the final, like, little conspiracy for you guys. But I 100% believe that they go in, especially between like so for example this is the third iteration of darth bane so we're gonna get hopefully queen amidala next and i 100 percent believe that they go in there after that first conquest and adjust stats on teams to make the second and third conquest harder than the first one i 100 percent believe that they go in there and tweak some of those teams to make them slightly better um to make it like oh i got max crate last time why can't i beat this team and it's like oh well the conquest pass exists um so i i've always felt that they go in there and they tweak that difficulty behind the scenes and just don't tell anyone because if you notice when you're in conquest here you can't see how fast the enemy is like i can't pop open padme or anyone else and see how fast they are they have the over prepared three but they don't give you a speed number and that's the reason i believe in that in this conspiracy so much if i could go in here to moff gideon at, on this boss note if i could go up here and say hey this moff gideon is 450 speed like i actually think they don't give you the stats because they go in and tweak these characters to make them that much more difficult particularly i think the second time around i don't think the third time as much but definitely that second time around, I've always felt like the difficulty ramps up just slightly because they didn't like how many people got that red crate the first time and they want to put a strain on those players and potentially make them purchase a pack. So those are my conspiracy theories for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Let me know your guys' thoughts. Do you agree with this? Are you like, Phil, you're an idiot. You don't know what you're talking about. Just shut up and you should go to sleep already. Um, but yeah, guys, I'd love to hear from you. Hopefully you have a great day. I love you all. May the force be with you. If you're still watching right now, Wampa is king in the comments. You can take your tinfoil hats off. I love you guys. See you in the next one. Cheers.